One of the best features of Windows 10 is that it offers the ability to perform many tasks in several different ways. In this video, we will look at the more commonly used options to hibernate your computer, to lock it, log off, restart, sleep, and of course, shut down. We will walk through what each option does and how to maximize each for different needs. Hi, this is Steve, and my goal, as always, is to help you make the most and to get the most from your computer. Please stay tuned to the end of this video as I will be showing you how to create scripts to perform all of these tasks and then how to pin those scripts to your desktop, start menu, and taskbar so that each task can be accomplished with a single click of your mouse. Let's start with Hibernate, which saves your workspace into a file named hiberfill.sys. Then it shuts down and when you power back on, it reads that file back into memory and essentially allows you to continue where you left off. Hibernate would be useful for those using a laptop who want to go to another location and continue where they did leave off. Click on Start, Power, and if you do not see the Hibernate option in the menu here, click on Start and begin by typing Control Panel. When you see the Control Panel pop up, open it up, and you may have to, on the right-hand side here, change the view by to small icons. Once the list loads, look for power options, open it up, and on the left-hand side, click on choose what the power buttons do. Once that opens, you will see the hibernate option here is not checked off, and it is also grayed out. To enable the option, at the top, you'll see change settings that are currently unavailable. Click on that. Now you can click on hibernate to enable it, save the changes, and now when you click on Start, Power, you will see there's a Hibernate option here that you can use to put your computer into Hibernate mode. If you never use Hibernate, you can certainly disable it and free up space that it otherwise uses. You can click on Start, type CMD, and when the Command Prompt option pops up, right-click on it and choose Run as Administrator. In the command box that opens up on your screen, type Power, CFG, space minus h off that turns hibernate off and also removes the hiberfill.sys file you'll see it's no longer an option in the start menu if you need to turn hibernate back on repeat the same command but instead of off at the end you type on now if you click on start power you'll see the hibernate option is back again when you lock your computer you are taken back to your login screen that makes you type in your password to continue Make sure you always have a password, because if you do not, gaining access to confidential information like saved logons, etc. is easy. To lock your computer, click on Start, click on your username icon, and there you should see the lock option. If it's not there, just as we did with the Hibernate, go into the power options in the control panel, and you will be able to enable the lock option there. When you log off or sign out of the computer, Windows closes all applications and takes you back to the login screen where you would need to type in your password. To log off or sign out, click on Start and then click on your username to see the sign out option. When you restart, you force the operating system to close all programs, inclu including all processes, so that when the computer does its power cycle, the core kernel can be initialized with either new or changes to the hardware or software. This is typically used when you update a program or install new hardware. To restart, click on Start, Power Options, and you should see the Restart option at the bottom of the list. Click on that and your computer will restart. Now, sleep is a mode that consumes less power and is typically used when someone is stepping away from their computer for a short while, such as taking a coffee break. Or power conscious users or those using a laptop might use this option, but it is not recommended for use if you are going to be moving the computer to another location. Click on Start, Power and Sleep, and here you should see the Sleep option. If it's not there or you actually want to remove it from the list, it's the same as before. Go into your control panel, click on Power Options, choose what the power buttons do, and Click on Change Settings that are currently unavailable and take the check mark out of the box next to Sleep here. When you save the changes, have a look back again and you'll see Sleep has been removed from the list. Now my biggest issue with Windows 10 
is that by default, it enables fast startup that allows your computer to shut down and boot up faster than previous versions of Windows. But shutting down in this case is a modified hibernate mode. This can certainly help older SATA drives load Windows 10 faster, but the real downside is that the operating system just picks up where it left off. So any hardware issues, etc., are still going to be there. With the new SSD drives, the startup gains are negligible. So the setting does more harm than good. So how do we disable the Hibernate options? Click on your Windows key on your keyboard and begin by typing Control Panel. Once it appears, click on it, click on Power Options, choose what the power buttons do, change settings that are currently unavailable. Here is the one that we want to disable. Turn on Fast Startup. If we uncheck this and save changes, basically that will stop the shutdown from going into hibernate mode and it will do a proper shutdown instead. Another shortcut that I like to use sometimes is if you press Alt and F4 on your keyboard, whatever program is currently highlighted, this key combination will close it. But if your desktop has the focus as it does right now and you press Alt F4, you will see that we have the shutdown options, sign out, disconnect, hibernate, so on and so forth. I will often create shortcuts for clients, especially for those that use servers with all of these commands as shortcuts on either their desktop, their start menu, or their taskbar. What I would recommend is open up your browser and go into your C drive, or you can do this into your documents folder, create a folder called scripts. Do exclude this file or this folder from your antivirus scanner because it could potentially delete the files on you. So what I have, hibernate, I have a command and a shortcut file to each one of the command files. So for hibernate, hibernate the command is actually shut down space minus H. For lock, if we edit that file, there is the command for locking your computer. Now, I will include all of these in the notes down below, so please be, do check out the description once you're done with this video. For the log off command, it's shut down space minus L. For the restart command, it's shut down minus R for reboot, minus F for force all running programs to close, minus T and then a zero for do it immediately. You can change the zero to 60 or 120 for two minutes or whatever value you decide in seconds. The sleep command is a little bit more complex. If you're using hibernate, using sleep command would actually just put it into hibernate. So in order to do a proper sleep, you first have to turn off hibernate, which is the power CFG minus H option. Then we issue the sleep command. Then we turn hibernate back on. Now, of course, if you're not using Hibernate or you've disabled it, you can exclude the two lines in here to turn Hibernate on and off. So how do I do this? I've got one more command that I'm going to create in that shutdown. I'd right click on the folder and we create a new text document. So in this case, we're going to create shutdown. And it's got to be a command file, so we change it to .cmd. Yes, when it prompts us. Edit the file and to shut down the computer, we do a shutdown minus S for the system, minus F to force all app running applications to close. And typically I use minus T zero, which is immediately without any delay. So we save that file. To create a shortcut to it, right click on the file with your mouse and drag it to a blank spot in this folder and choose the option to create a shortcut here. Now, the reason we're creating a shortcut is so that we can rename it to something that makes more sense. Nobody wants to see a CMD file, and we also have the ability then to add an icon to it. So in this case, we're going to name it Shutdown. Right click on it, go into Properties. You need to click on the Advanced option at the bottom here, and you must run it as an administrator. So check off that option. Then all of my scripts, you'll notice, have icons that are readily available on every single computer. Yes, there's a lot online, but I don't use anything online for clients because they need something that can be done with their environment. So we click on change icon. It will always tell you that the command contains no icons, which it doesn't. And it will load up the system default, which is the shell32.dll file. 
all of the icons that I use, you can find in here. You can scroll through this list and find the ones that you want to use. I have my own preferences because I know these icons for using them for years now. The one I use for shutdown is this nice big red button here. Click on apply. OK, and we have our shutdown command. So if you want this on your desktop, which I often do for clients, just drag it onto your desktop and copy it there. You cannot mistake what that button does. Alrighty, pop quiz for all the experts out there. Right click on the shortcut. There's no option to pin to start or pin to the taskbar. In fact, any of these shortcuts that we've created, there is no option for that. So how do you do it? It's actually quite straightforward. Right click on any other shortcuts that you've created. Click on properties. And in your target here, we have to add a couple of things. Type CMD space forward slash C space open quotation marks, go to the end of the line and close your quotation. Click on apply. Okay. Now if we right click on this shortcut, there we have the option pin to start, right click, pin to taskbar. There's the option to shut down the system. And if we click on start, there's the shutdown button that we've created. For all those that have stuck by me to the end, I'm going to show you another one that you can do. New text document. We'll call this one firmware.cmd. What this one is, if you're not sure how to get into your BIOS of your system and your system is running OK, there is a shutdown command. You can do shutdown minus FW for firmware minus S. Save this file. Now, when you double click on it to run it, this is what's going to happen. Your system will actually shut down and power off because we use the forward slash S option. And that's what it's supposed to do. And this is the only time it'll work is if you use it with that particular switch. When you turn your computer on, the first thing the computer is going to do is go into the BIOS. So if you want to make any changes to your BIOS, that's the quickest, easiest way to do it. Over the years, these options for controlling Windows have become somewhat confusing because of operating system changes. And of course, Microsoft changing the options slightly for each new OS that they released. With Windows 10, everything is starting to become more standardized. Now with these scripts and options, I hope that you are well on your way to getting a better understanding of your Windows environment. Thanks for viewing this video and have a fantastic day. And please, if you haven't already done so, take a moment to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for future videos that I will be releasing.